Welcome to the Pentecostal Tabernacle Podcast. We are a Bible-believing church dedicated to restoring lives broken by the consequences of sin. Thank you for joining us as we delve into God's Word, discovering its power to bring salvation, redemption, and transformation to our lives. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is how we win. This is how we win. This is how we win. Thank you, Lord. Well, if if you can remain standing and just grab, Lord, I grab a, I want a better way, grab a partner or two. Uh, In his book, uh, Shaping History Through Prayer and Fasting, uh, Derek Prince talks about every country gets the leadership that they deserve if they don't pray. And so we know that this Tuesday there's going to be a debate between uh, Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. And we all vote according to our conscience. And so, as you know, I would never tell you who to vote for. But what we want to pray for is that in this season there will be, will be a country of justice and righteousness. And, and so I want you just for about a minute, if you can, let's just pray for the debate, pray for this season of um, our, our country's in a critical time, and we want to make sure we pray. Amen? Amen. Is that all right? And now, repeat after me. The bishop bishop did not say say who to vote for. for. Okay. Okay. I have to do that because people get up on their feelings and they're trying to figure out. uh, We just need to pray. Amen. Amen. Let's just take 30 seconds right now. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you that you love this country make us a country that you said righteousness exalts a nation but sin is a reproach Father you know the hearts of men and the hearts of women we are asking you Holy Spirit that you would choose the leadership you choose for this country we have a choice of not doing anything and just watching things happen but like Apostle Salmon said, I, I refuse to stand idle and watch somebody else set my destiny. And so we pray that righteousness will exalt the nation. We pray for judge, justice to exalt this nation. Lord, you know the hearts of people. You know the heart of our Vice President. Kamala Harris, you know the heart of our former president, Donald Trump, and you know who you want. And so we ask you, we are not here to dictate to you who you should choose, but we will pray according to the scriptures, we will pray. So we thank you for your grace. We thank you that demonic forces will not choose who you choose to give power to. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, before you take your seat, tell the person next to you, it was good to pray with you this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. I believe in that prophet, uh, Clint Eastwood. Uh, a man got to know his limits. And so as I went in the valley, I made sure I put my arm around one of the young men so he can bring me back to the mountain. (laughs) Lord have mercy. (laughs) Well, one of the things I want to uh, praise God for, and you know, sometimes you gotta appreciate the hard work people do, and and I just want to uh, give appreciation for uh, the media team and the worship team and those who help in the sense that uh, I came here. For those of you who don't realize that we, yes, we got a new stage, but we're also getting a new uh, sound system. 
Praise the Lord. And, and you all were blessed because we had a test congregation in the first service, and they bore the pain uh, as we're uh, learning how to adjust. And, and they were tired because I came here about 3 o'clock yesterday, and none of these speakers are up. And me and my wife was like, well, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow morning, but somebody was working. And so we want to just extend our appreciation. Those who worked hard. Uh, this, uh, this week, the room will be treated with a whole bunch of stuff that makes the sound better. And you know, the big thing is that we'll be getting uh, drum enclosure. They tell me that it's the Rolls Royce of drum enclosures. I saw the price tag, it better be more than it, it better be a good Lord have mercy. <laughs> but um, we're doing whatever we, all that we can do to enhance the worship in this house. And so God, uh, God bless you. Um, I want to give a shout out. We saw Friday we've been following the prophetic word that was given to us from Pastor Chandler about for those who wanted to get married, uh, we were instructed to come together every uh, once a Friday, once a month to pray. And so we do First Fridays, and uh, last, this past Friday was amazing. Uh, my God, my God. We heard that God talked talk to us about not being uh, fearful and not making marriage into an idol. Mm. So I just want to praise God, uh, who uh, Sister Ababola spoke for the woman. Uh, yeah, I know. She's stand up, Ababola. So they, yeah, 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 yeah. She gave the woman. Amen. And Brother Aaron spoke for the man. Yeah, okay, okay. So it was a powerful time. The presence of the Lord is there, and we're grateful for that. Want to encourage you. Uh, when it comes to uh, our back to school service. And one of the values of this church, those of you who are new or those of you who may be a first time guest, one of the values that we have, we call it the seven Ps, and you'll learn that in the uh, partnership class, but one of our values is being a presence in the community. Now, uh, what that means is, and it's something that has driven me, and, th and this is what it means. It means that if, if uh, a, a gentleman by the name, a minister by the name of Dr. E.V. Hill preached a sermon uh, when I was about, uh, my goodness, I was probably about 20, 27-ish. And he preached a sermon back in 1985. You don't have to guess I'm 65. And he preached a sermon called uh, The Church That Matters. And he said, if your church was moved, removed from the community and the neighborhood did not miss your church, then your church does not matter. So that has driven me to make sure that we're such a part of a community that if we left, the community would miss us. So what was really exciting to me is that uh, during COVID when we were shut down, can't tell you how many neighbors said to folks and other staff, we miss you. Found out that when we had service, some of the neighbors literally pulled their seat up to their windows, had their cup of coffee, and just listened to the worship. Um, now in Cambridge, uh, they call it the People of Public, People's Republic of Cambridge for, for, for a reason. Uh, um, in order to have streets blocked off, you have to have your neighbors buy in and consent. And by the grace of God, next Sunday, we are blocking off this entire street, Perry Street, for our back-to-school reception. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what excites me more, we've never done this before, uh, but what excites me is that the neighbors said, yes, we want you to do this. So we praise God for that. So that means we need a lot of assistance, a lot of help. Uh, tell the person next to you, ask the question, would you be a part of the dream team? That's what we call our volunteers, the dream team. We, we want to dream big because we don't want to just have a block party and have back to school Sunday, but it also gives us an opportunity to meet our neighbors. Amen. Amen. So we encourage you this 
Sunday after this service. We'll be back to school Sunday. Make sure you bring a friend. God is good. Amen. Well, I want to speak to you. I'm really excited about this series. I want to speak to you on Receive Part 2. I, I don't believe God has given this series, which I believe will go uh, uh, to the end of this month. I don't believe God has given this series without his intention to release some things in our lives that we've been waiting for. And ha being one who had played football, and in particular I was a running back and went out for passes, uh, you have to be in position to receive. You have to have good hands to receive. You have to be alert to receive. And what I, what I am charged to do in this season is to get you ready to receive so that, <laughs> tell the person next to you, so that you don't fumble the ball. Amen. Amen. So if you get, don't get mad at me, get mad at the person who just told you. Now, I was, uh, just to give you some context, particularly those of you who are new and those of you who have been traveling with us, beginning of the year, the Lord said to me, uh, speak from the book of Philippians. And, you know, and one of the reasons why I believe he chose, well, I chose Philippians is because and I, I, I felt that this year was going to be a hard year. And I can't speak for you, but I know for me it's been a tough year. And one of the things I knew that the epistle, the letter of Philippians involved, and that is Paul is writing this letter from, from jail, from prison. And for me... I knew that the theme of the letter or the book of Philippians is joy. And the Bible says in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, that the joy of the Lord is my what? Strength. So I, I wanted, I wanted, I didn't want to be grumpy and miserable. I wanted joy throughout the year. And I said, Ben, uh, how can a guy who was in prison, in jail, how could he write such things as being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will perform it to the day of Jesus Christ, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. How, how could a guy uh, in prison say, rejoice in the Lord always? And again, I say rejoice while he's in prison. How, how can a guy in prison say, uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And the context of that is I've learned to be content yes, whether I have stuff yes, or I don't have stuff. I am still content in the Lord. How can a guy in prison say, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus? Tell the person next to you, I need that kind of attitude. I need, I need that kind of attitude. I need that kind of attitude. Whether I have, I don't have, doesn't make a difference. So I said, let me go through the book of Philippians and let me bring the congregation along. And as I started reading chapter one, what struck me is what Paul said in verse 21. He said, to me, for me is to live, for, sorry, let me read this thing. Uh, for me to live is Christ and to die is what? But what struck me is the point where he says, for me to live is Christ. And as I started looking and seeing either Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, I realized what struck me is that 
18 times in chapter 1, which only has about 21 to 24 verses, Paul mentions the word Christ. So I found that very intriguing. And then I said, well, Paul not only wrote a letter to the church at Philippi, church in Europe, but he also wrote to two other churches while he was in prison. He wrote to a church in a region of Ephesus, a city of Ephesus. He wrote a letter to, a, to the church in Philippi, and he wrote a letter to the church in Colossus. And I discovered that he wrote the words Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus in those three letters, 14 chapters, he mentions those words 140 times. That's almost 10 times per chapter he's writing about Christ or Jesus. So I said to myself, God, maybe you drew me to the book of Philippians not so much for joy, but for Christ. And then I realized, if I get Christ, I get joy. In other words, why go for the golden eggs when you can get the goose? Why go for joy when you can get the Christ who owns the joy? Why go for peace when you can get the Christ who produces the peace? Why go for... Uh, temperance and self-control when you can get the Christ who can give you the ability to control yourself. And that's how we got to this thing called in Christ. Are you tracking with me? Hope you're taking notes because this will really bless you. And so as I was looking to this whole life of, of being in Christ, I discovered that this salvation we have, this in Christ life we have, it, it, it's this process of justification, are you with me? Yes, sanctification, and then glorification. So justification is simply when God declares you not guilty. He declares the fact that you have not sinned at all. And the only way you get access into this thing called salvation is through the blood of Jesus. Are you with me? The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus is your ticket into the life of Christ. And, and the beauty of this entry is that you don't have to pay anything. All you have to do is receive. Are you tracking with me? And so we have... Um, and so as we enter into this, this in Christ life, this salvation, and you need to understand, salvation is not, unfortunately, when it comes to salvation, uh, we treat salvation, unfortunately, like a cell phone. And what I mean by that is anybody who has a cell phone and all they do is call, all you do is call on the cell phone, then uh, you are underutilizing what you have. Because most people don't even call it a cell phone, they call it a what? Smartphone, because it can do a whole lot of things. Even my mother, who is going to be 88 years old, okay, even she does more on a cell phone or smartphone than just call. She be playing her games. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What's your favorite game, Ma? Oh, yeah, she ain't got a candy crush. She's like, yep, 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 yep. She'd be texting. Now, aside, the only reason she really knew how to text is because she knew that her granddaughters were not about to, they ain't about that call life, so she, she, she learned how to text. But she'd be, Lord have mercy, my mom be texting me all the time. Uh, Did you see CNN? Did you see what happened there? I was like, okay, mom, okay, mom. <laughs>
My point is, is that your, your, your package of salvation is, watch this, all-inclusive. It's more than just a fire insurance policy that keeps you out of hell. God wants to save. He wants to salvage every part of your life. There's a life that you were born to live without Christ, and there's a life that Christ has for you that is exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. And I like the, 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 the living translation, uh, and this is uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. He says, beyond your wildest dreams. You have no idea what God has in store for you, but you have to live the entire in Christ life. So after justification, the end is glorification, and that's when we uh, get new bodies. That's when we, uh, we have the same body that Jesus has. We are, we are living in perfection. We, we are living God's dream. Uh, uh, no more arthritis, no more sickness, no more, no more COVID, no more cancer. We, we are free from all of the things that sin brought into this thing called life. Are you with me so far? And I remember, I remember when, you know, the closer I got to marriage, I would say, no, the ba I was, um, when I was raised in church, how many were raised in church when the testimonies, testimonies, and you stand there, no, I thank God, say, and I remember the, the older saints would say, Jesus come, Lord, and when we all get to heaven, what a, see, I can tell you were raised in church, only church people know how to, okay, 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 okay. enough, 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 <laughs> but I'll tell you, the closer I got to marriage, and wedding, it was Jesus, could you postpone your coming to after May 28th, 1983, and then you can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> yes, sir. But, the, but, but now that I got the age of the older saints, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Some of you young people are like, no, no, don't come quite yet. I, they're holding out this long, Jesus. You better, you know, you better slow your roll. You know? <laughs> Take that trumpet from Gabriel. <laughs> so you come in justification, glorification, but the process, your all life process is sanctification. Now, By the grace of God, for those of you who are, who are new here, this is a brand new stage. And as a brand new stage, one of the things that God was saying last week is that he's enlarging our stage so that we can fit more stuff on the stage that he wants here. And I shared last week that a pastor gave us a Hammond a C3 organ with a Leslie speaker. And I was like, oh, thank you very much, but unfortunately, we can't fit it on our stage. We didn't even know we were gonna get a new stage. And I said, could you store it for us until we're ready for it? He, in fact, we had this conversation about four months ago. And then when we found out that we got a new stage, I came back to him and said, hey, Pastor, you know, uh, we're gonna get it, we, we got a new stage now. And he said, yeah, now you can come and get the organ. Of course, and the organ's right here. And praise the Lord. But here's a point. The point is, is that be, because the stage was too small, the organ had to be kept someplace else. Come on, you better give me five right here. Yes. Okay. Turn your name and say, neighbor, neighbor. there is stuff that God has for your life, but your stage is too small. So it's in heaven waiting for God to enlarge your stage, better known as enlarge your heart. 
because your heart is too small to accommodate what God wants to give you. Because too often, when God gives us things, we think it's for us. And what one preacher said, if God can get things to you, if God can get things through you, he'll get it to you. There's some things that are not for you. Woo! I got a check from uh, Toyota because, you know, we were paying our car payments and we finished up. And they said, oh, you overpaid. So I got the money. I was like, yes. And the Lord said, that's not for you. Oh, no. <laughs> Jesus. I call him Jesus when it's painful. He said, give it to someone else. Actually, he told me, give it to a teacher. And sometimes you got to ask God, is this for me? Now some of you are like, I'm not, la, 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 I'm not hearing this. But if God can trust you that your heart is big enough for him to give you things, trust me, he'll give you more because he can trust you to give it to whoever it's supposed to be. And the good news, be given to the good news is that it's not, it's not, you're not going to be left out of it. But here's what I want to show you. If you could show folks the picture of what this stage looked like. So this is how the stage looked. Beautiful, nice wood, but it was still too small. And I wish we could have just leaped to this. But the in-between is this. And I went downstairs and I saw the rails, stuff being thrown out. And for some of you, <laughs> ah, tell somebody next to you, that's your life right there. That's your life right there. Feels like God is wrecking your life. It feels like God is pulling up stuff and you're chasing, like if you saw the picture before, we had nice altar rails and the rails were thrown out downstairs and no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, keep going. God's like, you have no idea what I'm building in your life. I'm doing some things that I want to fit into your life, but you keep, every, every time I throw out something, you keep carrying it back on your stage. Preach Brian Green. God is trying to get rid of stuff. Preach, Brian. God is trying to get rid of some people and you keep texting them back. Please, please, please come back. I want you back. Oh, baby, give me one more chance. <laughs> and God is saying, let it go. Let them go because I can't bring in new people in your life if you... This boy is preaching up in here. God yes. want to take stuff away from you. You holding on to that sorry job. And so God got to lay you off so he can give you what he wants for you. And so he destroys your stage so he can give you his stage because he's about to give and bring more stuff in your life. And this wrecking stage is called sanctification. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sanctification. Sanctus, Latin facio. Sanctus means holy. Facio means to make. So we have manufacture. Menus facio means to make with hand. Factory is, again, the etymology, facio, which means to make. Factories make things. But this is, this is sanctus facio. It means to make holy. And the word holy doesn't mean wearing long dresses, doesn't mean wearing, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm touching that a religious spirit. Uh, doesn't, uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't mean, you know, uh, 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 making sure you don't wear earrings and, and God help you if you wear uh, uh, no makeup and, and God help you if you're showing your toes. All you all be kicked out of the church. The word holy means simply this, to be set apart 
for God to use, to be set apart. So to be sanctified is to be set apart for God to use. So that means he's got to take stuff out of your life, out of your heart, out of your character so that he can use you. Okay? Okay? If you're, some of you, God is taking selfishness out of you. Uh-huh. Some of you, well, I'll talk about me. Say he's talking about himself. Say God has to take out of me, had to take out of me patience. I will, I, well, I, I'm still being sanctified, okay? I, I can be a very impatient person, okay? Uh, and, 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 and the Lord has to warn me sometimes. You got to be patient. I, I remember there was a season in my life. Say a season. Season in my life. Before they had the uh, self-checkouts, you know how you do, you, 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 you go on shopping with your little cart, and you iron the lines to see, okay? Or before when you have to go through the toll booth and they collect the toll, you're looking, okay, which one? Every, you know, of course, back then you had to stand in bank lines. Every line I chose ended up being the longest line, Mama Rita, every line, every line. <laughs> Every line. One time I was in a short line, there was just one person. And all the other, there were like five in the other line. I was like, yeah, I got it. And you know, boop, 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 boop. And all of a sudden, oh, sorry, I don't have, I, I, I forgot my wall. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. And God said, until you, until you get patient on the inside. Mm. Cause some of us can show patience on the outside. Mm -hmm. But we're steaming on the inside. Tell your neighbor, that's you, that's you, that's you, that's you. That's you. Leg be shaking. Mm -hmm. Tapping your head, you know. Uh -huh. All fidgety. Yeah, I'm talking about you. Okay, okay, okay. We're trying, but, but, but God wants us to move from trying to trusting. So we're sanctified. There's three things that God uses to sanctify us. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 12 says, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. So the blood of Jesus sanctified. The blood of Jesus, again, it, the blood of Jesus makes us, sets us apart for God to use. So he sets us apart from sin so that we can now be justified. The blood of Jesus. The other thing that God uses to sanctify us is the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11 says, prior to that, Paul lists all these sinning things, all these lists, this list of sin. And then he says, and that is what some of you were, and that's what some of you were doing. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God. Look, folks, you can't be holy without the Holy Spirit. So the beautiful thing is that not only did the blood of Jesus give you a ticket into the kingdom, but also he gave you his spirit. The same spirit that caused him to be successful in this earth, the same Holy Spirit that dwelled in Jesus Christ dwells in you also. You, and, and this is the beauty of it. When children, get, <laughs> when children get the Holy Spirit, they don't get a little Holy Spirit. And then, you know, oh, you get the five-year-old Holy Spirit, but someday when you get 15, you'll get, a, you'll get a teenage Holy Spirit. And then, ooh, when you get in college, you get the college Holy Spirit. And then when you get, no, no, no. The, the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. You, 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 have, you have that dude. Yeah, he is him. He's just waiting for you He's going to grow with you. The Bible says in Luke chapter 2, verse 52, that Jesus grew in stature and in wisdom and in favor with man and favor with God. When you have the Holy Spirit, expect people to give you favor. Mm. Second 
Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 says, but we ought to always, sorry, but we ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord, because God chose you as fresh fruit to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit and through belief in the truth. So, secondly, it is the Holy Spirit does the work of sanctification. Tell somebody you're working too hard. You need to understand that the Holy Spirit, this, this, this movement of grace, grace is trusting, not trying. And I believe if you're like me, you are trying too hard and because you're trying too hard, God can't do the things that he wants to do because if your trying could do it, what would happen is that you would take credit for what only God can do. I took the DISC test, D-I-S-C, for the first time. I'm late to the party. And I discovered that my trade or I'm still learning this thing, but my main characteristic is defender and protector, which is, I guess it's good to have a pastor who's defender and protector, but it's not really good for me because now I am always trying to fix things. I am trying to fix problems. I am trying to make sure things are okay. And when a problem comes, comes up, watch this. When a problem comes up, watch this. When a problem comes up, my first response is, I have to do something. And I am prone, I'm talking about me, I am prone to try to handle a problem. My first instinct too often is to try to handle a problem instead of first asking God, should I even be involved in this problem? Repeat after me, there is no problem. There is no situation. Okay, I'm not hearing everybody. Say there's no problem. There's no situation that does not require prayer. I was arguing with somebody. I said, I have to fix this. In fact, I'll be honest, I was arguing with your dad. Yeah, yeah, okay. This is uh, Reverend John Cleveland. He spoke at our church a few months ago. I was arguing with his father because I said, I got to do something. I got to fix this. He said, well, why don't you pray for him? And I'm like, duh, pray. Something has to be done. It's like, watch it. You, you're, you're driving on 93 and all of a sudden your tire goes flat. Well, how about praying? No, we need to fix the tire. And I'm arguing. The Lord's like, pray for us. And then maybe, just maybe, you won't have to do anything. I'm going to help you out here. Because the third thing that helps us to be sanctified, separated for God's use, number one is what? What did I say? The blood of Jesus. Oh, you're listening. Number two? The Holy Spirit. And number three is, watch this. This is Jesus saying, speaking. John 17, verse 17 says, Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. The word of God is a sanctifier. Whew. The Word of God is a sanctifier. In other words, the Word of God tells me how to separate myself for God to use me. Now, one of the challenges, and I want to encourage you that the well, which is our Bible class, it moved from Sunday morning to Tuesday night, 77 Columbia Street at 7 o'clock. We're living in an age where there is, where people are, are biblically illiterate. And so what's happening now, let me just look at the clock because I'm going to mess with some of you, is that all of these prophetic words that we get, a whole lot of them aren't even based on Scripture. I'm just going to look at the light. I, let me tell you something. I went to a, I went to a pa, to pastor school 
uh, John, uh, John, not John yet, uh, Jack Hayford's pastor school. Amazing experience. And I was out in L.A., and I was like, oh, no, let me go to some of these churches that I heard about, seen on TV, big ministries. And I remember going to, a min- uh, 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 to, to this church, amazing pastor. The worship was, oh, my God, it was incredible. We sang some of this song. And then the pastor said, the pastor said, no, no, the bishop said, the Lord told me to divorce my wife and marry this other woman next week. And he did it. And people who don't know the word was like, yeah, that sounds like the Lord leading you because you were having problems with your wife and it seemed like she was holding back your ministry. The devil is a liar. And that's scripture, John 8, verse 44. And what's happening is that we're falling for prophetic words that are not based on scripture. It's quiet in this Pentecostal church. Because even the devil can tell you things that come to pass. It's quiet here. It's quiet here. Uh, the, the greatest... The highest, some of, you, some of you say, oh, I, when is Apostle Salmon coming back? When are you having Pastor Chandler coming back? Because I need a prophetic word. I got good news for you. You can get a prophetic word every day. Because the Bible says that the word of God is the book of prophecy. You can have a prophecy every day. Shanda da And then when people say, you, you have no idea the crazy stuff that people say to me, and I was like, I, I don't even have to pray about, was that God? That's not even in the scripture. Will you get, please. It is quiet in this place. That's why we have to, uh, Psalm 11 verse three says, if the foundations be destroyed, what will the righteous do? How many were raised in church? Raised in church. Amen. How many of you were raised in church that you, you learned scriptures, okay? And it could be crazy church, but they, they, they said, come on, come on, come on. You can, right now, begin to thank God that you were raised in a church that at least believes in the Bible, okay? I know some crazy stuff went on there, but at least, because there's a whole lot of churches now that just give you, let me just look at this, just give you motivational messages. How to get a better life. How to get your next blessing, how to get to a new level. And ain't nobody talking about suffering, nobody talking about going through, nobody talking about going through and at the end all you have is Jesus. James, who's Jesus' half-brother, same mother, Different fathers, of course. He says in James chapter 1, verse 1, he says, uh, lay aside all filthiness and superfluity. This is the King James Version, unnightiness. And he says, receive with meekness, with humility, the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. The word wants to graft itself to you to the point that the word now lives its life through us. But he says, receive. Psalm 24 verse 4 says, uh, starts out with, who can ascend unto heavens? Who can ascend to the holy place? Then verse 4 of Psalm 24 says, he who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, spoke about idolatry on Friday night, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive, say receive, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. I love this. Ask and it shall be? Ask and it shall be what? Given. Seek and ye shall what? Knock and the door shall be opened. For everyone who asks, everyone who asks, everyone who asks receives. Receives. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you shall receive what? 
power after the Holy Spirit shall come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. Acts chapter 19 verse 2. Paul meets the disciples of John. I'm almost finished here. And he says, um, uh, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And their response was, and he says, yeah, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? And they, their response was, we haven't even heard of the Holy Spirit. But again, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. <laughs> receive the You don't have to work for the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm talking about me. Uh, no, I, wrote, I was raised in the days of Tarian. Mm-hmm. Yes. Tarian. You know, you got to fast and pray and, 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 you know, come by here, my Lord, come by here. And, you know, you're almost at the gate. You're almost there. You know, no, 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 no. Those are stammering tongues. You got to, you know, and, 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 and praise God for my experience. But that was not receiving. That would work. It is quiet in here. I know I'm messing with you. This next scripture was one that I memorized because I was, and I shared this Friday, I had to wait on the Lord for the lady, Carmen, to receive me. And while I was waiting on the Lord for two and a half years, waiting on the Lord, Yes, Lord. Waiting on him from 1979 to December 2nd, 1980. Mm -hmm. Yep, I waited. Lord, have mercy. I waited. The Lord gave me this scripture. And some of you may need to write it down and bolden it. <laughs> Hebrews 10 verse 36. For you have need of patience and endurance. So that after you have done the will of God, you will receive the promise. Amen. Tell somebody you need patience, need patience and you need endurance. need endurance, but you will receive the promise. Now, during that period, God had a sanctified Brian Green. Yeah, yeah. He had to take some things out so that she could receive me because some people can't... <laughs> Some people can't take you whole. Some people, you know, you're the type of person that people need bite sizes of. <laughs> Tell somebody, because you're a whole lot. <laughs> I, I know you think you're, you're all it, you a he and you a she, but you, know, you can be a lot. I know I can be a lot. I know up front here, it's like, oh, Lady Common, she, no, she has a man of God like Bishop, you know. The, out here is the performance. I, I, can, I can keep myself nice for two hours. But there's things, and, 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 and it's, not, it's not like I'm sinning like crazy at home. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> But, but this, this, I have some ways about me yes. that God gave me the right wife who can just say, bless his heart. <laughs> <laughs> and while you're waiting for marriage, God is saying, you know what, you're a bit much. You, you, you just don't know it. <laughs> you just don't know you're a bit much but I'm going to work on you yes, so, so that your marriage will last. Yes. Yes. Can somebody say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear too many. That maybe I need to get the man on the organ and say, can somebody say thank you, Jesus? <laughs> say yes. yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> say yes. Final picture. This is something that I'm talking about trusting and not trying. And this is my final. If we could show this image. This is a lesson that I will never 
forget because as I was trying to figure out this, God, you're saying trust you and, and move from trust to try. What, what does that even look like? My, uh, we bought our house in 1996 and uh, my dad is a child of the depression. And as a child of the depression, and look it up in Google, it was a very horrible time. My grandparents had, well, they had eight children and my grandfather didn't work for six years and somehow God made a way. But when you go through that, you learn to not throw away things because you don't know when hard times are gonna come again. So my dad, I don't know if you've ever grown up in a house where they have those big stereo systems it's furniture. I don't know if anybody know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Like the record, you pull up the thing, and I mean, big speaker here, big speaker here. And he said, Brian, uh, seeing that you have a garage, I want you to store this in your garage. And I said, Dad, you, we're never, you're, you're never gonna use this. So let's just throw it away. He said, Brian! And, and you know, when, when my father says Brian like that, the conversation is over. Uh, so I put it in my garage, and, uh, and last month, we said it's, it's time for the stereo that nobody's using for 28 years to go. Now, some of you may not realize my dad passed away in 2020, and I figured after four years, he's not gonna come back and give me a beating, so it was safe to take it away. Now, I don't know about you, but nowadays, when they take away trash, they, sometimes they don't take away everything. So I knew that I had this big thing, and I said, I don't want to take it out to be thrown away because it's heavy and then the, the rubbish collectors not take it away. So I drove to the public works. I showed them a video of what I want to throw away. And they were like, yeah, 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 they'll take it. I said, are you sure? Because, yes, yes. So me and Lady Carmen, we, we lifted, we're like, oh, Jesus. So we got it on the, the sidewalk. And of course, I come home, and it's still there. And I call the people up, and this, they had, this was, oh, I remember you. <laughs> yeah, well, no, here's a number you can call, and they'll definitely pick it up. I called the number, and of course, they didn't pick it up. So now I'm trying to figure out how to get this monstrosity from in front of my house. And I am, and the Lord said to me, don't worry, I'll take care of it. And of course, being obedient to the Lord, I was still trying to figure out how to get this thing from in front of my house. So I, some of you know I used to go on a prayer walk. I, that's how to get my exercise. I'm going on this walk. And I was about to turn up a street and the Holy Spirit said no. Now I didn't know it was the Holy Spirit till after. I was going to turn up another street. The Holy Spirit no, said no, just keep walking. So I do my walk and then I get in front of my house, and of course, this is big stereo, so I said, well, I'm going to ask Lady Calm, who's up, if she will help me to move it into our yard or off the street. The Holy Spirit said, no, 
move it by yourself. And my wife in the earlier service said, yes, Lord. So I am dragging this thing, dragging this thing, dragging this thing, dragging this thing. And all of a sudden, this truck drives by. And as I'm dragging it, now he's across the street, he stops and he says, hey! I said, all right, are you selling that? I said, no, I'm just throwing away. He says, you want to throw it in my rubbish truck? I was like, is your name Gabriel? <laughs> and lifted up, threw it away. And this is the point I'm making. If I'd have gone down any of those streets, if I had asked Lady Carmen to help me, because the cars, they're just going by, but at the precise time I was there. And God was saying to me, if you just would have received my answer, Yes you, got, yes, you got the item that was annoying you off the sidewalk, but your mind kept turning about how to fix this. You're in a new season, folks. We're in a new season that if we would just position ourselves to receive, there's going to be a lot of things that God will work out for us if we would just believe. And I can hardly wait. You better hold on to your seatbelt because next week when I talk to you about rec what receiving looks like, whew, I, I wanted to talk to you about it this morning, but the Lord said, wait till next Sunday. But get yourself in a posture, in a heart posture to receive because things are about to get released from heaven and he's trying to align us to what he wants to do. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all stand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 For one minute, could you just pray for the person next to you that God will open their hearts to receive? That God would open their hearts to receive. I know you look at that, well, what's the big deal about a waste rubbish truck coming by. It is just that God had it, the timing. God is moving our steps to be ordered. He wants to put us in strategic places. Come on, just, just pray, open your mouth and just say, well, I don't know how to pray. Yeah, just, yes, you do, just say, God, help this person to receive. Help their heart, help their attitude, give them the mind of Christ. Because everything that we get from God, we receive. Paul criticized the church at Corinth by saying, what do you have that you did not receive? Thank you, Lord. Some of you need to receive healing. Some of you need to receive deliverance. Some of you, some of us need to be individuals who are willing to receive things that we didn't work for. People try to bless us and we feel almost guilty like I have to pay for something. I have to give you something. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, oh. Thank you, Lord. This is going to be a different season. This is going to be a different season. As heavy as head is bowed, every eyes closed. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your Savior, this is a good time to receive. You don't have to do anything other than receive him in your heart. Maybe you're here, you walked away from the Lord and you think, well, I have to, I have to pay for my wrongs and I have to, I have to do something. God said, no, 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 no. Just come. Just come. 
as heads are bowed and eyes are closed before we conclude this service. I'm not going to ask you to leave your seat and come up here. Nope. All I want to do is pray with you as you receive Jesus Christ back into your heart. Or if you've never received Jesus, to receive in your heart. He wants to do life with you. So his heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If you're here and say, Bishop, I want to give my life to Jesus or I want to give my life back to Jesus. If that's you, could you slip up your hand because I want to pray with you. I'm not going to call you up here. I'm not going to embarrass you. But Jesus wants to come into your life. And I don't want to miss anybody, whether it's coming back to the Lord or giving your life to the Lord. Slip up that hand so I can see it. I want to make sure we don't miss anybody. Praise the Lord. I want to make sure. Everybody repeat after me just in case somebody's watching online. Dear Lord, I come to you as a sinner. Your word says, whoever calls on your name, Jesus, shall be saved. So I'm asking you, Jesus, come into my heart, save me from my sin, and make me a child of God. Jesus, thank you for coming into my life. Now I know I'm a child of God. Amen. Can we just praise God for that right now? Got good news for you. If you said that prayer, even if you didn't raise your hand, if you said that prayer, that means you are a believer. Yeah. Amen. And if you gave your life to Jesus, please see somebody from the welcome team or go down to the Spice Hub. We'll give you a free Bible. We'll give you material, whatever you need to continue your walk with God. At this time, I'm going to ask you to put out your hands. Those of you, if you're first-time guests, we end with a closing blessing and not a closing prayer. So put out your hands because I want to give you a blessing. And the reason why our hands, uh, palms of our hands are face heavenward because James chapter 1 verse 17 says, every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of God. And I'm going to give, I want to give you a blessing that the Apostle Paul gave to the church at Corinth. It's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14. Now, and, and for those of you who want prayer, uh, uh, extra prayer, if you there'll be an elder or two to my left, your right, over here who will be here to pray for you. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you today and throughout this entire week. And everybody say, I receive that blessing. blessing. Have a great day. God bless you and enjoy your weekend. Thank you for joining us for today's episode. Remember to subscribe to our podcast to stay connected and continue exploring God's word with us throughout the week. You can find our show wherever you listen to podcasts. Until next time, may the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you, turn his face towards you, and give you peace.